Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning Miss Flora Good morning my friends Hopefully we are always in good condition Amin Today we are from group scientific method Which consists of Duharta Tiningsi Susilowati Nuri Nuryani and video call will talk about scientific method our topic will be presented into four parts the first one is telling the concept of scientific method the second one is how do we apply the technique the weakness and the strengthness the third one is what language what skill and component language we can apply using this method and the last one is how do we apply this technique in the classroom to the students okay come to the first part that is about the concept of scientific method yeah scientific approach or scientific method as introduction here in 2013 the Indonesia the Indonesian government released the curriculum 2013 the curriculum 2013 is the development of the 2006 curriculum or well known as curriculum based competence in the regulation issued by the Minister of Education and Culture Permendikbud number 81A in 2013, it is stated that the process learning according to the curriculum 2013 is a process of education provide opportunities for students to be able to develop any pattern learning that occurs inside the two-way inter interaction between a teacher and students. I state in Lead Bank Kem Kemdikbud Go ID curriculum 2013 is a concept of education and culture that develop the student probability characteristic. The teacher must stimulate students to observe, make questions, associate, experiment, and then communicate. All those steps are called scientific approach. Curriculum 2013 aims to prepare the Indonesian people to have the ability to live as individuals and citizens who believe uh, productive, be, crea be creative, be innovative, and be effective, and be able to contribute to society, uh, nation, state, and world civilization. Permendikbud number 70 in 2013. Curriculum 2013 defines the appropriate graduate competence standards as the criteria regarding the qualification of graduates' capabilities that include attitudes, knowledge, and skills. As Sunny State in 2015 on page 45. The term scientific approach has come along in the development of English teaching for junior high school, senior high school, and vocational high school since the introduction of the new curriculum 2013 as the umbrella of schooling system in Indonesia. Scientific method is considered the procedure of teaching which values much on the process of learning and student competence so that it can facilitate and develop students' cognitive, affective, and psychometer aspect. Originally, a scientific approach or method is basically a common term used in the field of inquiry. Scientific method originated from the empiric, empiricist theory that views experience as a foundation of source of knowledge as uh, has been stated in 1995 on page 21. This view also gains support from a philosophy of science called positivism 
that believes the goal the goal of knowledge is derived from logical and report of sensory experience of phenomena as Godfrey Smith state in 2003 in a positivist view of the world science was seen as the way to get a truth to understand the world well enough uh, so that we might predict and control it therefore this blue method of finding the truth called scientific approach the definition of scientific approach there are three here they are the first one is is in education particularly in the field of science it is defined as logical orderly approach that involves gathering data formulating formulating and testing hypotheses and proposing theories yeah, as we can and monroe state in 2006 the next uh, the next one is the definition of scientific approach is the process of asking questions and making experiments to find the answer McMurray and Fay in 2008 the third one the definition of scientific approach refers to a set of assumptions, attitudes and procedures that guide researchers in creating questions to investigate in generating evidence and making conclusion Hockenberry and Hockenberry in 2000 the definition of scientific method purposed by some expert above can be summarized as a body of techniques for investigating phenomena acquiring new knowledge or correcting and integrating previous knowledge lately the 2013 curriculum in Indonesia views scientific approach as the way of teaching adapted from principles of discovery established by Dyer, Ger Gregerson, and Christensen in 2011. According to Dyer et al. in 2011, most successful innovators entrepreneurs and executives show similar behavior which is involving several steps in discovering innovative ideas these principles involve five main skills the first one is observing the second one is questioning the third one is experimenting The, uh, the fourth one is associating and the last one is networking Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Okay, this is the chance to me to explain the science method involved a series of steps that is used to investigate a natural occurrence This time I would like to explain about the step about the scientific research scientific method Uh, there are some steps in delivering scientific method the first one is a problem or a question second is observation or research the third is formulate a hypothesis fourth is experiment next collect an analysis result the last is conclusion and uh, this is the important thing is communicate the result The first step is a uh, problem and question. Problem or question is develop a question or problem that can be solved through experimentation. For example, is uh, John wants his grandmother bake bread. He asks his grandmother what makes the bread rise. She explained that yeast releases a gas as it feeds on sugar. John wonder if the amount of sugar is in the receipt will affect the size of the bread loaf. Next is observation research. 
Observation research is make observation and research your topic interest. For the example is, John research the areas of baking and fermentation and tries to come up with a way to test the, his question. He keep all of his information on this topic in a journal. The next step is formulate a hypothesis. Predict a possible answer to the problem or question. For the, for the example is, if soil temperature rise, then plant growth will increase. The next step is formulate a hypothesis. After talking with his teacher and conducting further research, he come up with a hypothesis. If more sugar is added, then the bread will rise higher. The next step is experiments. The first experiment is develop and follow a procedure. The second is included a detailed material list. The third is the outcome must be measurable or quantitable. The next about the experience is John write out his procedure for his experiment along with a material list in his journal. He has both of this checked by his teacher where she checked for any safety concerns. The fifth step is collect and analysis a result. The first is modify the procedure if needed, confirm the result by research testing, and include the table, graph, and photographs. This is the example of collect and analyze the result. John comes up with a table. He can use a record his data. John get all his material together and carries out his experiment. And the uh, sixth is conclusion. In the conclusion, include the statement that accept or reject the hypothesis. Make recommendation for further study and possible improvement to the procedure. This is the conclusion for the example. John reject his hypothesis, but he decided to retest using sugar amount between 50 gram and 100 gram. And the last one is communicate the result. Be preferred to the present the project to an audience. Expect question from audience. That is the seven step in uh, using scientific uh, scientific method. And what are the advantages and uh, disadvantages of scientific approach? The first one is the, uh, the advantages of scientific approach. The major advantages of scientific method is the data it collect is empirical. The information is gained through direct observation and experiment. This is an advantage as it allows psychologists to make claim about the truth of the theory. And what are the disadvantages of scientific approach? The first one is results are highly subjective due to the possible of human error. Second is experimental research can create situations that are not realistic. That is, it is a time-consuming process. And the last is there are many ethical and practical problems with variable control. Uh, the strengths and the weakness of ex experimental method. The strength is the higher control of variable, easier to comment on cause and effect, and relate, relatively easy to replicate. And the weaknesses is demand characteristic, participant aware of, ex of experiment, may change behaviors, and artificial environment or low realism. This is about the, uh, the time for me to explain about the step about scientific method and the strengths and the weaknesses of the scientific method and next will be next session will be will be explained by my friend thanks very much well assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh i'm tridioko thank you very much for giving me time and i will continue the presentation my chance is about what skill and language component that can be taught by using a scientific method. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we come to the first slide. It is about essence of a scientific method. Uh, as we know that, um, scientific method or scientific approach 
that is uh, used or adopted in 2013 curriculum. It is to develop students' uh, affective, uh, cognitive, and psychomotor. And this approach or this method uh, have some purposes or goals. Uh, for example, um, to build uh, students' ability in um, problem solving, uh, to to make students uh, think that learn or study is uh, a need, and for achieving maximal, maximum maximum. Uh, or high result and next is uh, for uh, communicate communicating idea mm, and also it is for uh, character building uh, for students or learner and this method also believe that uh, by using uh, five steps of uh, scientific method like ob observing, uh, questioning, experimenting, associating, and uh, networking or communicating, st students or learner uh, can uh, active in con constructing the knowledge and the competence uh, for making a web uh, for all subjects uh, that they learn in the school. Related to the question uh, about what skill and language component that can be taught by using uh, scientific uh, method, according to my group, uh, we uh, believe that all of uh, language skill can be taught by using scientific method. For example, in speaking, there are several studies uh, concerning the implementation of scientific methods in speaking skill. For example, Utami in 2016, uh, the, the research uh, show that uh, there are many students uh, got high score in speaking after uh, being taught by using scientific method. And another Example from Helena Wati, 2015. Uh, she implemented scientific method, and the results show that uh, there there was a significant improvement in post test after being taught by using scientific method. Next, how about teaching reading and uh, listening by using scientific method. Uh, according to Mulyasa, 2009 and 2013, he stated that uh, the main factor uh, to decide the, su the successful of teaching and learning process is uh, depends on teacher creativity. Uh, good quality of teacher depended on how well he or she could teach in the classroom. So, uh, we can combine or uh, remove uh, some step or some uh, aspect in uh, the method that can uh, suit to the condition of the student's characteristic like, like physical, ethical, social, cultural, and intellectual aspect. Uh, how about writing skill? As you know that in the last uh, steps of this method, uh, there is uh, networking or communicating. As we know, communicating uh, not only speaking, yeah, uh, writing also, because communicating can be in oral or written uh, text. So, like or uh, doesn't like, 
uh, when we are going to use scientific method, we should uh, consider that uh, our students uh, must uh, have uh, the quality or ability in producing skill like speaking and writing so yeah communicating is uh, the main point uh, i think yeah and how about language component i think as a teacher uh, we cannot only teach for example grammar in our class i think uh, it is better uh, when we combine it when we combine it in for example in teaching writing as we know that grammar is one aspect of writing so in teaching writing we can also teach grammar uh, in our class so it is better for us to combine some or uh, some aspect together to achieve the real goal of our uh, teaching learning uh, process and the text for example another example uh, teaching vocab maybe we can also add some new vocabularies when we uh, start to teach writing so I think it's better when we are uh, going to use scientific method scientific method in uh, our classroom activities okay that's all of my short presentation and about the implementation of this method or this technique uh, will be uh, explained by Miss Nuri thank you very much sorry for mistake uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Nurin Nuriani Here I am as uh, the fourth speaker from scientific groups, scientific approach groups I'm going to explain about the implementations of scientific approach in classroom activity As stated previously, there are some steps of scientific approach the first is observing and then questioning, then associating and then experimenting and the last one is communicating. All of these all of these steps are put in the language in the learning activity in um, classrooms and here we show you a lesson plans in which um, the scientific approach are put in the activity um, we choose senior high school grade and the class is class 10 for the first matters and we choose announcements as the topics for the time allocations is it is about uh, two learning hours or maybe it's about 90 minutes as we know uh, as the teachers um, there are some components some aspects which should be um, should be put in uh, lesson plans it includes core competence basic competence objectives materials teaching methods media tools and learning resources steps of learning and the last one is assessment okay um we begin from the core competence actually there are uh, four kinds of core competence core competence number one two three and four but um from the newest juknis um, 
the core competence one and two should not be put in the lesson plan so it only uh, core competence number three and four for the core competence number three it is related to um uh, to cognitive domains and then for the core competence number four it, it is related to um skills domain or psychomotor dom domains for core competence number three it is understanding, applying, analyzing, factual, analyzing factual conceptual procedural knowledge according to the student's curiosity about science, technology, arts, culture, and humanities with the concepts of humanity, nationality, statehood, and related to the situations and implementing procedural knowledge in the specific sorts of study according to their talents and interest in solving problems. For the core competence 4, it is processing, reasoning, and presenting in the realms of concrete and abstract domains related to the developments of what they learn in school independently and are able to use methods according to scientific principle. And then basic, basic competencies. It is derived from um, core competence because the matter is about um, announcements and the announcements is stated in it is written in um, syllabus that is uh, basic competence number 3.5 in uh, 10 grade students um, 3.5 and 4.5 for the um, psychomotor for the 3.5, it is differentiate social functions, text structures, and language features of announcement text by giving and asking information about school activity based on the context. And then 4.5, uh, which is the related to psychomotor, um, it is um, divided into two. Um, Core competence number 4.5.1, it is getting contextual meaning related to social functions, text structure, and language elements specifically in the form of announcements. And core uh, basic competence number 4.5.2, complete the specific text in the form of short and simple spoken and written announcements with due regard to social functions, text structures, and linguist linguistics ele elements correctly in context. For the objectives, the objectives of the teachings is the students are able to the first ones identify the social functions, generic structures, and language features of announcements. Uh, the second ones is give response to announcements, and basic uh, objectives number three is make announcements text. And for the materials, the materials is. Uh, written and uh, written or spoken announcements statements or text that tells people about something public or formal words that announce something and it covers uh, three as aspects uh, there are social functions uh, in social function it established emotional closeness between relatives co-workers office staff entrepreneurs and customers etc by writing notifications about important events such as birth, marriage, graduations, moving to new buildings, etc. Second one is generic structures. Uh, the generic structures of announcements uh, covers two aspects. The first one is title, and the second one is explanation. For the title, this is the most important part because it is represents the overall contents of the announcer even so sometimes it is not clearly stated for explanations a further explanations of the announcements usually consists of basic information which includes type of activity time place and participants and last one is language features uh, it covers expressions um, and vocabulary which commonly used in announcements but it can be singular and plural nominal with or without 
a, the, this, those, my, their, etc. Correctly in nominal phrases. It can be speech, word, pressures, intonations, spelling, and punctuations. For the teaching methods, the approach used is scientific approach and the model is project-based learning for the techniques uh, we use discussions and questions and, and answer. For the media and tools and learning resources, media, media which is used it can be PowerPoint presentations. For the tools, we can use notebook, LCD, and active speaker for the listening activity. Uh, for the resources, the metrics announcements, it can be um, definitions, gender structure, and examples, uh, which we can um, get from the internet. Um, we can also use uh, uh, the book from the government, Bahasa English 2013 curriculum from Kementerian Pendidikan dan Kebudayaan. For the steps of learning, there are three stages in the steps of learning. The first one is preliminary activity and then main activity. The last one is closing. <clears throat> okay. Um, for the prelim preliminary activity, it covers 15 minutes. Um, usually, teacher prepares the student psychologically and physically to participate in the learning process. And then teacher gives motivations to the students to learn. Teacher asks questions which links to previous knowledge with the material to be learned. Teacher explains the learning objectives or basic competencies to be achieved and conveys the scope of material and explain the descriptions of activities according to the syllabus. And for the main activity, it covers about uh, 60, 65 minutes. And here, uh, in this stage, um, it is scientific approach um, scientific approach stages which we put here the first one is observing questioning associating experimenting and the last one is communicating for the first steps or the first stage of in observing activity students are given several examples of written text in the form of a notice or announcements and uh, they are asked to read the text. Students are allowed to access the internet or, or open other references to find various forms of announcements. And students give comments and views about the functions of written text in the forms of announcements, the, the accuracy of the linguistic elements, format, appearance, etc. The next stages is questioning in this part. Um, by the teacher's guidance and direction, directions, students are asked and questions about the differences of announcement text in the part of social functions, text structures, and language elements among written texts in the forms of announcements in English and those in Indonesian, possibly using other expressions. The next stage is associating. Here, Students compare social functions, text structures, and linguistic elements from various written texts in the forms of announcements that have been collected from various sources mentioned above. And then students analyze uh, differences and similarities in terms of social functions, text structures, and language elements from, the, from various written texts in the form of announcements that have been studied above with those in other resource, sources. And the last activity is students get feedback from teachers and fans about social functions and um, linguistic elements used. The next stage is experimenting. Here, students read references from various sources, including textbooks, to find 
to find out social functions, text structures, and linguistic elements from written text in the form of announcements. And then students read more carefully all written text in the, in the form of announcements that have been collected to provide, common, to provide comments and views on social functions, text structure, and linguistic elements. Collaboratively, students imitate existing examples to make written text in the form of announcements for real functions in the classroom, or they can look at school, home, and surrounding areas. The last stage in here is communicating. In this stage, students strive to speak fluently with speech, words emphasize, correct intonations, or write with correct spellings and punctuations, as well as clear and neat writing. And then students discuss the problems experienced in making written text in the form of announcements and writing them in a simple learning journal in Indonesia. Okay, for the <clears throat> last stage um, of steps of learning is closing. It covers about 10 minutes. Usually um, in this activity, in this, in this stage, um, teachers provide feedback on the process of learning outcomes and carry out follow-up activities in the form of signing individual tasks and inform the lesson plan for the next meeting. For the last is um, assessment. The types of assessment techniques which can be used here is written test and performance test. The, the assessment process takes place during the learning process that starts when the activity observes, asks, collects data, associates, and communicates. The assessments um, in 2013 curriculums covers three aspects. The first one is effective, um, and then cognitive, and psychomotor or skills. For the effective, um, it can be observation, self-assessments, and peer evaluations, journal in the class that contains records of students' behavior made by the teachers. For the cognitive, it can be students' knowledge about the text structures, lingu linguistics elements, is evaluated using written tests, and assignment. For the psychomotor or skills, uh, it can be practice or practicing or performance daily assignments or tests determine the general description, certain or explicit information, and word references um, from simple notification text. Okay, that's all about my presentations. Thank you for the participation and thank uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh